Republic. They are so terrified that we who are doing all that they possibly can to keep us, the American people. Thank you so much. Aloha. It's wonderful to see you all here again at such a critical time. Our democracy is under attack. The perpetrators of this attack are those who, in the name of saving our democracy, are destroying it. I don't use these words lightly. Every one of us who loves this country and who cherishes peace and freedom should be very alarmed by those who, driven by their insatiable hunger for power, are actively undermining all that we stand for. And almost every single day, if you're paying attention to the news and the headlines, there is some new assault and some new attack. Now, it's the Democrat elite and the swamp creatures in Washington who are doing all that they possibly can to keep us, the American people, from a very simple thing, having the freedom to choose who we want to be our next president. And it is clear through their actions they have no respect for us and they have no respect for our fundamental rights as citizens of this democratic republic. They are so terrified that we the people may make what they think is the wrong choice. That in the name of protecting democracy and saving us from ourselves, they're actually destroying our democracy and taking away our freedom. Now we look throughout history and we can see many examples of evildoers who find some justification, who believe that they are doing the right thing. And so today we see the Democrat elites say with great concern in their voice that if the American people elect Donald Trump again, they warn us he will destroy our democracy. They say he will be the dictator in chief, that if he's elected, it will be the last election this country sees. It's laughable. It is so crazy, it's laughable. But they're justifying their actions by telling themselves that they need to destroy our democracy in order to save it. It's lunacy, and it's the mindset and mentality of dictators. They are waging a multi-front battle, and they will stop at nothing until they're successful. I'm going to go through a few of the many examples. We've seen how Colorado, Maine, 32 states have taken some action or another themselves in an unprecedented way to try to remove the leading Republican candidate for president, Donald J. Trump, from the presidential ballots. In defiance of the Constitution, these people are single-handedly deciding that somehow they alone have the authority to take away our right as citizens to decide who we want to be our president. We see in Congress, a progressive congressman, Ro Khanna from California, someone who I've known for years, he is so desperate to take Trump off the ballot that he's demanding that the chairman of the Federal Reserve, a position that's supposed to be nonpartisan and apolitical, take action and intervene to stop the former president from getting reelected. On December 27th of last year, Representative Khanna said in a post on X that Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell, quote, should cut interest rates now, given most of inflation was caused by supply shocks. If he doesn't, he may be the person most responsible for the return of Trump. The Democrat elite and their cronies, they're using our criminal justice system to prosecute and distract the Republican presidential candidate in the midst of his campaign. As we know, Donald Trump currently faces 91 charges in four criminal cases, 44 on the federal side, 47 on the state side, all felonies. This most recent ruling in New York, the real estate case, charging him a $355 million fine, fine plus nearly $100 million in interest for a business transaction where there was no victim or complaint, where all parties made money. So egregious that even people who are not fans of Donald Trump are standing up and saying this is crazy and criticizing this judge's decision that from the very beginning has been a very clearly politically motivated hit job. Wow. 
This is the truth. They're hoping and doing all that they can that they can convict Donald Trump of some crime, any crime, to try to undermine his support and therefore prevent what they fear most, a second Trump presidency. And there's a reason why they're so afraid of him, because he poses a threat to this establishment where they draw their power from. When we take a step back and look beyond the personalities, look beyond Donald Trump and Joe Biden, what we're facing is a threat of far greater magnitude. A very dangerous precedent is being set. Our democratic republic is being destroyed by the permanent Washington elite and there are people in both political parties who truly believe they and not the American people have the right to decide who should be our president. They easily and dangerously dismiss our Constitution, the rule of law, the voices of the American people, anointing themselves as the ones who have the power and justification to make this most important decision. Now, I've only mentioned a few of the many examples I could write a whole book detailing all that's been done, all that the Democrat elite in Washington establishment have done and are doing to try to destroy Donald Trump and steal our election. As you know very well, President Trump has endured years of attacks. What we're seeing now is a continuation of something that began in 2016, ever since he came down that golden escalator. Now, I've met a lot of strong, tough people in my life. I can't think of a single one who could not only withstand all that they are throwing at Donald Trump without crumbling, but someone who would actually choose to keep fighting against the entire Washington establishment. I've known Joe Biden for a long time. I used to consider him a friend. Do you think he could handle this pressure? I don't think so. I think even a fraction of this pressure and stress and attacks that Trump has endured would cause him to crumble. Now, if you listen to what Nikki Haley has been saying, she claims that she claims that President Trump only cares about himself and that he's doing all that he's doing only for himself. If that were the case, wouldn't he just walk away from all this? Walk away from the headaches and the attacks and the stress that he's enduring right now? So why doesn't he? I've had the chance to meet with him and speak with him at length, and I've seen firsthand his heartfelt interactions with friends of mine, veterans, and I've seen how he has touched their hearts and move them to tears as he expressed his appreciation for their service and their sacrifice. No cameras, no crowds, just that heartfelt conveyance of appreciation. I've gotten a sense for what motivates him, and it's got nothing to do with what the Washington establishment is accusing him of. This is a man who's a fighter. His strength and resilience His strength and resilience can only come from one place. His ability to endure this hardship can only come from one place, and that's a sincere love and concern for the future of our country and his care for the American people. But we've got a lot of work to do ahead of us. Now is the time for us to act motivated by our love of country. We've got to take all the outrage and sadness and fear that we may feel caused by those in power who have no care or respect for the will of the people. Take all of those feelings and let that motivate us to take action, to find strength in knowing that they are doing what they're doing because they're afraid of us. That just like we see foreign dictators are afraid of democracy, the Democratic leaders so afraid of a free people and a free society and the possibility that we, the American people, might make the wrong choice in this election by choosing someone other than them. They are doing all they can 
through the power of law enforcement, the criminal justice system, the national security state, doing all that they can to stop us from exercising our freedom. They forget that we the people are the ones with the power. But we have to use that power. We cannot allow them to get away with this. Our democracy is under attack and it's up to us to save it. We have to hold those responsible accountable at the ballot box. We have to send this strong message to leaders in both parties that those who abuse their power and undermine our democracy and our freedom will not be tolerated. If we do nothing, if we turn a blind eye to those who are weaponizing our criminal justice system against their political opponents and telling us who we are and aren't allowed to vote for, telling us what we are and aren't allowed to say or see or hear, it will set a dangerous precedent for every election and presidency in the future and it's democracy as we know it will be finished. Now I know we face challenges in our entire political system and those challenges are not limited to one political party. There are politicians from both parties who are more interested in serving themselves and their own interests than they are than about serving the needs of the American people. And they're not going to give up without a fight. On January 27, 1838, President Lincoln delivered a powerful speech to the Young Men's Lyceum of Springfield, Illinois. And he said, quote, at what point then is the approach of danger to be expected? I answer, if it ever reach us, it must spring up amongst us. It cannot come from abroad. If destruction be our lot, we must ourselves be its author and finisher. As a nation of free men, we must live through all time or die by suicide. The choice before us is clear. Freedom isn't free. We can't lose sight of what we can accomplish when we, the people, stand together on the foundational principles that this country was built on. A free people with the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We must protect free speech of all Americans. We must stand against those who'd rather censor, cancel, and smear rather than engage in honest debate as our founding fathers did. When the free speech of one person is threatened, even when that speech is reprehensible to us, the free speech of all people is threatened. Same goes for freedom of religion. In our America, freedom of religion does not mean freedom from religion. Real religion is love for God. It's not attached to any one religious sect or label or another. Our government must respect our freedom to worship and express our faith, express for our love for God as we choose. Or, for those who choose not to, they have that right as well. Our founders intentionally passed the Second Amendment right after the first because they knew how fragile this new free democracy was and how susceptible it would be, and it still is, to those who abuse their power to try to take away our freedom. So we have to defend our right to bear arms, not only to defend ourselves and our loved ones, but to serve as that important check on the abuse of power by an increasingly tyrannical government. We must stop the bipartisan warmongers of Washington who constantly beat their war drums, who have pushed us to the precipice of World War III and a nuclear catastrophe. Now, President Eisenhower warned us clearly in his farewell address about these people, those in Washington who bend the knee to their bosses in the military-industrial complex and then shrug their shoulders and look the other way at the costly, damaging, and potentially catastrophic consequences of their, decision, of their decisions, the cost that every one of us pays. We need leaders who are committed to peace, strength, and prosperity, because we cannot be truly prosperous as a nation unless we are at peace. Unfortunately, war is sometimes necessary to defeat those who threaten the safety, security, and freedom of the American people 
And as a soldier serving now for almost 21 years in our military and still serves today, I know this firsthand. But I also know that war must always be a last resort after all other avenues have been exhausted. We need leaders who are committed to upholding the rule of law, who are committed to keeping our communities safe and securing our borders. In our America, we must come together inspired by love, love for God, love for others, love for our country, because we live in the greatest country in the world. It's filled with potential for us to stand together and build a brighter future and a more perfect union where every American can live free, in peace, and with opportunity for prosperity. To make this future a reality, we must not only come together in spaces like this with our brothers and sisters who agree with us, we also have to reach out to those who we may not agree with on every issue, but who love this country as we do and who are just as frustrated with those abusing their power as we are, whether they're Democrat, Republican, Independent, or Libertarian, we must stand together as fellow Americans who cherish peace and freedom, cherishing our commitment to save our country and defend our republic. Those in power in America today are leading this great nation toward the suicide Abraham Lincoln warned of. If we do not act now, we will look back at this very moment with regret, but we won't be able to say that we had no warning. By God's grace, we are free and we will remain free. God bless you all. God bless America. Let's go and save our country. Thank you so much, everybody. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha. Wonderful to see you all here again today. If you're paying attention to the news and the headlines, there is some new assault. Thank you so much. Attack are those who, in the name of saving our democracy, republic. They are so terrified that we, and it is clear through their actions, they have no respect for us and they have no respect for our fundamental rights as citizens of this democratic under attack. The perpetrators of this attack and some new attack. Now it's the Democrat elite and the swamp creatures in Washington who are doing all that they possibly can to keep us, the American people, should be very alarmed by those who, driven by their insatiable hunger for that in the name of protecting democracy and saving us from ourselves, power are actively undermining all that we stand for. And almost every single president. And at such a critical time. Our democracy is, they're actually destroying our democracy and taking away our freedom.